Hi everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So in today's video, we're going to be continuing on in our uh, Control Logics PID Essentials video series. And what I wanted to do was start setting up the required tasks that we are going to need uh, in order to make our PID enhanced instruction work. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things. We're actually we're going to create one additional task here and that's going to be a periodic task. Rockwell does recommend that you do place your PID enhanced instructions in a periodic task because the instruction will automatically use the update rate as the update time for the PID loop controller. Okay, so this is easiest to implement and can be used in most applications. So let's go ahead and do that straight away. So I'm just gonna go over here. Actually, you know what, let's just close off this because this is part of the simulation package and this is what's gonna tie everything here into our program. And of course, you can download the simulation uh, from plcgurus.net. I'll include a link to it um, in the comment section below. Okay, so let's just stay uh, right click on the task and create new task. And we're gonna call this, um, let's call it loop control. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave all of the other defaults the way they are. So automatically now, when we add our PID enhanced instruction to our routine, it's automatically gonna get a delta T of 10 milliseconds, okay? And that's important. You do not wanna place your PID instruction in the continuous task because you cannot guarantee the update rate, all right? So let's go ahead and add the required um, program and necessary routines we're gonna need in this periodic task. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new program. I'm gonna call it Programs, and I'm gonna click OK. And then within that, I'm gonna go ahead and add two routines now. Now I am going to be implementing the PID Enhanced Instruction in a function block diagram. Function block diagrams really lend themselves to process control, and so we are going to leverage uh, that form or style of programming here in this video series, okay? So if you've not used it, no problem. Uh, this will be a good exposure to how function block programming works. So let's add two routines. So I'm gonna add a new routine. And this routine, we'll keep it a ladder, and this is gonna provide some loop control auxiliary functions that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and call it loop control auxiliary. And we're just gonna click okay. So we do wanna make sure we assign this guy as the main routine in this program. So remember, the CPU only scans one routine in each program. So you can see here in the main task, main program, the main routine here is identified as the main uh, routine in this program because I can see the little uh, sheet of paper here with the one symbol, all right? So every program needs a main routine associated. So this program, I'm gonna click on Programs, Properties, and I'm gonna go to configuration and I'm gonna assign loop control auxiliary as the main routine for this program. Okay, good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add now the function block routine that we're gonna actually add the PID instruction to. So I'm gonna right click this again, I'm gonna go new routine. And this time in the type, I'm gonna hit the drop down and go function block diagram, all right? And I'm gonna call this routine loop control and click OK. All right, so why don't we go ahead and open up the loop control routine? So you can see here, I've opened up the loop control routine and it looks like just a sheet of paper. All right, and that's typical. So you can have many sheets in a loop control and typically you have one process loop or one loop of, of a process per sheet. That's typically, you don't have to, but that's typically the way I'm seeing it done and the way I typically do it. I'm just gonna drag this over. It seems to be off center a little bit here. And you know what, because we are gonna be doing a little bit of work here, I think it's probably better that we go offline at this point and do some of the changes or add some of the logic that we wanna do offline and then we can download it into the controller. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go offline. And there we have it. So notice up here, we have an instruction palette now. And I do want to just add one instruction to this function block diagram for now. And then we're going to go into the other routines and, and proceed to program those, okay? 
So let's go to the process tab. And notice here we, we have a PID E. So this is the enhanced PID instruction. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this out onto my, um, my sheet surface here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to change that name. I'm going to edit that name. So I'm selecting it, editing it. And I want it to follow our diagram that we had there a little bit more. And this was called a TIC or a temperature indicating controller 01. So we'll say it's, well, you know what, let's call it 101. So this will be part of loop 101. So TIC underscore 101. We'll click apply. We'll click OK. And I think that's all I want to do for now in this function block diagram. Okay, so I'm saving that and let's go ahead and program some of the other routines. But before we do that, I thought it'd be a good idea just to review some of the IO that we had listed in part two of this video series. So just quickly looking through that IO list because we're going to start to populate that now in some of our standard um, routines here, namely the loop control auxiliary as well as the main routine. So looking top to bottom, we have our start stop push button. We have our hand auto select at the follow or auto selector switch at the following input addresses. And then we have the analog input for our temperature disturbance. And we have a process running and process stopped type pilot light. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to populate some of the IO specifically in the loop control auxiliary routine right now. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and add a jump to subroutine instruction so that we can jump from the main routine in this task program into the loop control routine where our PID loop is going to be processed. So let's go ahead and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to add a new rung. Let's go ahead and type in JSR. So that's another way that you can go ahead and add instructions if you know the shorthand abbreviations for that instruction. Otherwise, you can find it in the program control tab over here, and there it is right there. Okay, so we want to jump to the loop control function block routine, and let's go ahead and give it a run comment, and we're going to call our function block diagram subroutine for PIDE processing. All right, that's sufficient. All right, so the next thing we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of rungs. So we want to start to populate some of this I.O. so that our simulation panel can start doing something in our program. So to do that, I'm going to go just head back over to, uh, let's just go to the favorites. I'm going to put in two XICs as well as I'm going to need a move. And like I say, we'll explain some things as we go along here. Um, but it will really drive it home once we get the full process up and running. And then we'll take a look at what each piece is actually doing. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and create a new tag. So just follow along in the meantime uh, with what I'm doing. So I'm going to call this process running. So this is going to be our process running tag that we had in our IO list there. And I'm making it an alias type. And it's going to be an alias for the output pilot light there. So that was local five output data zero. Okay, and I do want to change the scope because um, most likely I'm going to want to have access to these um, operators as well as lights in multiple tasks, multiple programs. So that's the thing with the scope. So we're allowed to give broad exposure to tags or we can restrict by making them program scope tags specifically, okay? But for the purpose of the rest of this stuff, I think we're gonna go ahead and make everything controller scoped, okay? And maybe I'll call this pilot light, okay? And click create, and there we have it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. This time I'm gonna call this the hand auto switch. And again, we're just following our IO list here. So that'll be an alias for. And the auto mode switch was actually on data two. Okay. And we'll call this selector switch. Selector switch. Okay. And we'll click create. All right. So now for this guy, what I want to do here is I want to take the CV value. Let's go back to the loop control for a second. 
And notice that we have something called CVEU. So this is already a pre-scaled version. But for the purpose of this video, I think just so I can give you exposure to a few more instructions, I'm gonna actually use a different variable to drive the output, namely CV, okay? So we'll get back to here to show you how we can turn different parameters on and off. Uh, but for now, well, let's just go take a look. If you go into the parameters and we sort parameters alphabetically, there will be something called CV, there it is. And this is an unscaled value and we'll do the scaling ourselves with the scaling instruction just to show you how that works. And we'll click apply and now it will be visible on the instruction and there it is right there. Okay, so you can use this one, uh, but I think just so I can give you some exposure, we're gonna go ahead and just use CV, all right? So let's go back here now to our loop control auxiliary. Double click, I'm gonna type in TIC underscore 101. So I'm referencing the PIDE loop control instruction, and then I'm accessing the members of that type by using the dot notation, so dot CV, okay? And what I wanna do now is I wanna move whatever that CV value is when I'm in automatic mode into a tag called CV hand, which you see over in the simulation panel here, and has already been created in the template file that you've downloaded. And I'm gonna do that, okay? So let's go ahead and just give this a description so we know what it's doing. And for this one, we're gonna set CV hand value while in auto mode. In auto mode. So the reason we're doing that is that if we stop the process, whatever value while it was running in auto is automatically gonna go over to CV hand as a starting point for the valve position, okay? If it's not clear, don't worry, we'll make it clear as we go along. And then the last rung I wanna add to this routine is this here. So let's take a look. Go back to favorites. So this time I'm just going to say when we're not running. So let's go ahead and drag that tag down. I want to do a couple of things. So one is I want to say the process is stopped. And remember from my our, our IO list there that that was tied into output 5.1. So we're going to call this process stopped. And again, this is the pilot light. And we're going to make it an alias type again. And it's an alias for the process stop pilot light. Yes, you guessed it. Okay, so that's data and data point one. Okay, and create. And then one last thing, I'm going to go ahead and add another move to this. And this time I want to create a new tag. So it's going to be a new tag and it's going to be of type real. So let's select that right away. And it's gonna be called CV safe position. So this is going to be the safe position that we wanna drive the valve to when our process is stopped. Remember when we talked about that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that. And I wanna move that value now into CV hand. Okay, good. And I think, well, let's just make a description here just for completeness. So let's set PID's CV value to safe position value. Okay. Okay, so this will get clear when we run the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And you know what? I think that's enough for this video. Um, I don't want to make them too long. I want to give you these little nuggets. And I think in the next video, we'll head over to the main routine and start to set that up. And then finally, we can start programming the actual PID controller and get all that up and running. So I hope you found this video informative. Please subscribe and like our channel and head on over to https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. Thanks for watching.